Hello, I hope this video finds you well. Tonight we're going to look at count high from string two, and this is the Java solution. We're going to do this two ways. We're going to do this using a classic loop approach and thinking about reading frames, and then we're going to do it using this nice shortcut where we collapse the string. The problem states return the number of times that the string high appears anywhere in a given string. And we can look at these examples and make sense of this pretty quickly. We see this string has high once, this string has high twice, and this string has high twice. So before I begin, I just want to kind of talk about this idea of reading frames. So I need to look at this and count the number of terms times I see high. And again, students will look at this and say, oh, I see it there once. But imagine this was a million characters long. You would have to actually do it systematically. So think of these two X's as my reading frame. I'm going to look at the two letters that are above those X's. So I'm going to start off by looking at 0, 1, then 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8 but I don't want to get 8, 9. And the reason why is because I'm looking at two characters. If I get to that last index, I'm going to end up with an index that of bounds error if I try and pull out O and nothing. So that is my first substring I want to run, and the last set of my loop is I want that to be my last substring. So if I think about this from a loop perspective, the first substring I'm going to do is going to be 0, 3, Sorry, 0, 2, pardon me, I don't know what I was thinking. And the last one is going to be 7, colon, 9. And I'm just using Python notation here. Okay, so now this helps me set up my reading frame. So let me do this incorrectly first and, sh and help you understand how this works. All right, so I'm going to make an int called count, and I'm going to set it equal to 0, because we have 0 counts so far. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to return count. And I hit go, and I get zero. That works right sometimes. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a loop to loop through and check two letters at a time and say, are you high? And if it is high, I'm going to add one to count. So I'm going to say for int i equals zero, and i is less than. And remember, our standard loop to go through every element in a list or an array, sorry, or a string, pardon me, <laughs> is this, is um, str.length, and then i is equal to i plus 1. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a temporary variable here, string temp is equal to str.substring, and remember, I want to take these two letters at a time. So I'm going to use i as my first parameter, and then i plus 2. And remember, I can really ch quickly check the length of this substring simply by taking the second parameter minus the first. And notice i plus i plus 2 minus i equals 2, so I'm going to get a substring of length 2. And now I say if temp dot equals, remember I have to use the dot equals method high, we're going to say count is equal to count plus 1. And I hit go, and I get all these index out of bounds there. The reason why this is happening is because this loop structure is going to go all the way to the last index, which is 8, and I don't want to reach there. I want to go to 7. So if I think about this, to reach 7, if the length here is 9, it's going to be 9 minus 1. So it's going to be length minus 1. And there you go. That's why it's really useful if you're first learning how to do this, is to use this, okay, what is my first substring I want to do, and what is my last substring I want to do? Now, of course, we can tighten this up quite a bit. First thing I would do if I was actually solving this is I wouldn't actually store that in a temporary variable. I would do str.substring i comma i plus 2. Um, and then I would say, okay, well now this is a single line of code, so I'm going to get rid of those braces. Works. And now I have this for if with a single statement structure, which I've talked about is a common one you'll come across on the AP exam. And so I get rid of those braces, and it works beautifully. All right, as beautiful as this is, let's look at another way to do it. Um, this is what's called collapsing the string. It's a really useful technique, but be careful, it can fail in certain situations. Well, it turns out that Java and a lot of other languages have this really wonderful function called replace or replace all. And if you replace a string with an empty string, it will collapse it. What do I mean by that? Let's take this example here, and let's just paste this down below quickly. If I take this, and I collapse the string. What I mean by that is I'm going to replace all of I'm going to replace all of the highs with an empty string. So what's going to happen is this high here, 
Let's just line these up so they can see they're lined up. This high here is going to disappear. So I'm going to say delete, actually. Sorry, let's just get this one more line here. There we go. Oh. There we go. Okay, so if I collapse this, I'm going to get rid of this high. So this high is going to delete, so it's going to do that. But notice now the length also shrinks by 2. So now the length deletes by 2, so we think the length here is 7. And we don't need these x's anymore. We don't need these x's. All right, so now what I've done is I've collapsed the string. So what I can do is I can check the relative length to see how many highs have been replaced. So I could do something like this. I could return, I could do string str1 is equal to str.replaceAll. And I'm going to replace all the highs with an empty string. And then I'm going to return, and I'm going to say str.length minus str1.length. Is it going to work? Not quite. Well, the reason it's not going to work perfectly is because this is assuming that this is assuming that I'm that the length I'm looking for is one character. It's counting every character that's been replaced. So here, notice I've replaced two characters because they've replaced high once, four characters because twice. So what do I have to do? Well, I have to take this and divide it by the length of the string I'm looking for, which in this case is two. So I'm going to divide that by two, and there it is. This is a really nice technique. Great to have in your back pocket. I'm going to talk about it with some solutions we do shortly. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a wonderful day.